Aries? Yeah, Aries. Aries Ram. Hey. What are you um what are you Chinese? Uh me Chinese uh, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Reggie, no. <laughs> what, what? We're starting what? wrong. <laughs> I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> no, we were What's doing the me Chinese bit. No, <laughs> no, um, that we that we always do constantly. You guys' favorite bit. Uh, <laughs> no, um, the year of the rat. Me, year of the rat. Me too. You're a rat. Well, of course you're. A rat. Wait, you guys are the same age. Possibly. You must Possibly. Be. No, yeah, you, 43. You are. You are. Yeah, 43. You guys are a year younger than me. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty fascinating. That's so interesting. We're Wait, we have to see if Reggie likes my coffee. Moshe says I use too much coffee. Reggie, the guest in our house, I made it pretty I haven't, much. I haven't tried it yet. Pretty okay. much how I do it in the morning. So you have to tell us. Okay, so this is uh, this is leger leger uh, legerado. That's a legerado. I'll take a the Also, how much do the beans Wait. matter? <laughs> Hold on, Reggie. We, we need to know. Uh, play, it's time to play microphone or coffee. What's your favorite racist trope, Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait a minute, let me try again. And it does have half and half in it. Oh, you put cream in it without asking? He, no, no, she, uh, okay. she, she, I, she, she, I said move. for cooling. He said he could handle uh, it. I like it. It's really good. It's got like a nice, the half and half kind of amplifies some of the natural coffee like bitterness there's a little bit of bitterness in coffee so it kind of amplifies a little bit but then there's a sweet note because of the half and half as well the coffee is a really nice flavor it's pete's <laughs> is it sorry it's not it's not anything fancy no but it, it, fancy. It, it tastes good i just buy whatever hey, good is roast ground. is a good roast man good roast is a good roast i start to panic when they want me to grind my own beans at gelson's i'm like i'm not doing this what so do you what, do instead? Whatever one is already ground, I grab like peas. Oh, you grab pre-ground. Oh, pre-ground. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, like okay, I don't, I I'm not going to sit there and put the beans in the bucket and try to remember what grade. Oh, I put want. the beans in the bucket and you press the button <laughs> and you have yourself a grind. <laughs> and you come back to Gelson's for another nice roast and you go all of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned in to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. That's Reggie Watts is doing a taste. We asked him here. Specifically to do taste tests. Well, um, I'm glad that you don't think my coffee's too strong. It's great. Reggie, what did you, did you drive here in a Countach? You don't yeah. want to tell people. Yeah, in a drive? Countach. No, I drove here in a 911 Turbo no, S. No, you're a big, you're a car man. I, I'm a car man, yeah. I what? mean, that I'm a, car. I'm a San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. What in the world are you talking about? How are about? you? <laughs> Reggie, when you pulled up in that car, I was like. This has a large footprint of personality. Oh, yeah. oh, oh the, the car does? Really? Yes. I mean, have you met Reggie? He's wearing purple fleece. <laughs> purple the man has, fleece. The man has personality. Uh, yeah. When you were young. It's fun. Yes. When, when you, you were young. When you were young, were you um, always like a, a wild man? Again, a wild man. Uh, no, I, I was part of the wild men's. Uh, we grew up. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was your first band. Yeah, yeah. The wild men's were... <laughs> I mean, they were amazing. We were reform. We, um, no, I, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I've always been like a little stranger, you know, a little, I, I just, I was kind of a weird kid because I, I think I was so nerdily curious in the, 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 like the smallest things, you know, like, like, I mean, every kid's like, you know, we have fascinations with like small toys or like whatever, but I, everything, like a, anything, I was like, Oh, what's that? How's that work? Oh, is this, a, what are you, what are you doing with that? Oh, let me see how this works. You but know? it was gadget based, gadget not based? like very nature. gadget, very gadget based. Nature was cool. And I got to interact with it a lot, but I would probably say I gravitated to technology a lot more. And I think t- just being, into technology makes you kind of weird when you're yeah. that young especially at that time in history yes. that was when technology was still a countercultural kind yeah. of expression right? yeah it was people were like nerds you right. know it's like you're a nerd uh, what do I, I work in computers you know and and that totally flipped obviously and now then, that's but, everybody and now that's everybody <laughs> i work well remember when it started where it started to get cool and then people acted like they were tech Right. To be yeah. cool, yeah. So they'd get like a, a a weird mohawk and a leather yeah. jacket, like a yeah. leather uh, motorcycle racer like, jacket. I, I do tech, like I'm into tech, and it became like an aesthetic. And yeah. uh, and now now it's kind of washed out. It's well, the everywhere. Tech, that tech aesthetic is has disappeared. Like yeah, I mean, I still see some people 
that have that kind of hackers vibe, that kind of sure. Angelina Jolie. But it's like sure. it, now all the tech people are billionaires. I mean, what what aesthetic is that? I don't. There's no aesthetic. No. They it like is, large couches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like modular, those? modular. <laughs> Wait, Reggie, but when did you become cool? Like, didn't you listen to indie music? You must have like. <laughs> Um, yeah. We're also cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. As a kid, not just cool. a dork. Did you ever listen to or a in, nerd. indie music at all? <laughs> no, um, no, because no, I na- I call it Native American music. Yeah, it's um. No, listen. I have a very. This is why I said that. I have a very strong um, image of Reggie. It is in his oh. house in Montana, uh, like listening to like. Right. You know, yeah. it's just like. The Smiths or something. <laughs> yeah, that I does mean, sound like the Smiths. I, I mean, it's like, well, I don't know. I just, castle, but maybe yeah. you weren't that. Maybe you were like a, a nerd well, just, in your room. I always thought you were like a cool kid, I well, guess is what I'm saying. I don't think I was always a cool kid. I think I think what it was is I was kind of just my own thing. And I was good at kind of integrating with different kinds of people to kind of make friends and to hang out in situations or because I was curious of their lifestyle or something or the things that they were into or something. So I always did that. I think the cool factor when I was like kind of thinking to myself as like, am I cool or not? You know, was when I discovered the breakfast club. Like Uh Mm. when I saw the breakfast club, that was, I mean, I definitely in junior high, obviously like you're, you start to be concerned about the way you look and like fitting in and stuff like that. So I did, I tried some stuff, but really like the feeling of cool it's different when a movie gives you that much of your identity in a, in a way. Uh-huh. Who are you? Aesthetic. I was kind of a combination of Bender and uh, Ali Sheedy's character. Right. <laughs> Bender is the pussy chomper. Yeah, yeah, he's the yeah he's yeah. he's the pussy chomper. Who yes. plays Bender? I was full pussy chomper. The, Judd, Judd 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 Nelson. Harrelson. <laughs> Woody Woody Judd, Woody, Woody Nelson. Woody Nelson. <laughs> Woody Nelson. That's, that's correct. Woody Nelson. You yeah. know what you are, honey, right? Molly Ringwald. Yeah, you're Claire. Yeah, Claire. Oh, Claire. Oh, Claire. That's a fat girl's name. You know, <laughs> you know what? Actually, you're Claire, but with an Emilio Estevez family. Oh, life. definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Estevez <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Dad. What about you? Uh, Fuck you. <laughs> that's you. Honestly, though. He, <laughs> no, that's not him. That's the other guy. That's the other guy. That's us. That is us. Hearing you talk us. about being so influenced and you know yeah. by a movie or like it, especially starting in seventh grade, I was thinking of my kid today who's only five and how fun it would be oh, to just kid. freeze her. Yeah. In this time before she's like oh, too in, right. she's not really influenced by anything. Like right. she doesn't know who Taylor she's, Swift she's, she's is. She's in absorption mode. Yeah, yeah like still. she thinks whatever we do is cool. Oh yeah, she's down with you guys. But, but like soon she's gonna go to a movie and leave me forever. <sighs> I doubt it. You know what's cool about you, Reggie? Doubt it. Yeah. In a, in a world, I mean, listen. You, in a world. In a world gone yeah. mad. A gone mad. There yeah. one man one stands man alone. stands one alone. He is the pussy chomper. He is the el pussy chompero. <laughs> is that in a world of, of iconoclasts, you know, entertainment, mm. you are the most iconoclastic perhaps among us. Like you are so yourself and you are so comfortable in your individuality. That is, and, and I feel like that's, sort of a permanent fixture of you and that's such mm-hmm. a hard thing to have as mm. a young person especially to go like i'm like fully me in this mm. way that's like so super comfortable do you think of yourself like that wow yeah i mean i i kind of do in that i feel like i've known myself a long time like i feel like i've been my own best friend all my life because yeah. i had to i had to just had to be by myself a lot you know my, being an only child Dad was busy at work, like in the Air Force, young, young days. And my mom immediately was working. Um, and my both my parents were super hard workers. So, I mean, we spent a lot of time when I was younger, for sure. But uh, but still, being an only child, you still have that extra time when you, like, go into your room before bed or you're, like, just playing around in the living room with toys while your parents are hanging around, doing stuff around the house, that kind of stuff. So I definitely had that. And then as I got older, especially, like, hanging out with friends – and drugs coming into the the picture where I kind of like my mind like got blown open for the absurdity of the world, like the silliness of everything. Yeah. I got maximum amplified. And then like all the Monty Python I had been watching before the drugs. Right. Uh, all of that just like all collided and made sense. And I was like, what oh, a cool fusion. Fuck. Yeah, totally. Like it's almost like drugs activated all your yes. different lives to come together. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it was just like, it was like with our powers combined. Um, it was, 
it was crazy. So I think it's that. And then I just spent How a lot of dialogue. How lucky to have that. That was it. Yeah, but that I'm, was it. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I tried. I feel that way too. Like that I, I like I have always liked and been attracted to weirdos. Like that is my, yeah. those yeah. are my people. And like, yes, I, what was the drug that first split your mind into? Was it acid? It was acid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, weed, when the first time I got stoned, you know, like I tried to, everyone has that story of like, oh, I tried weed. I didn't get stoned the first time. Same. Yeah. So I totally like tried it in front of my, my house, my friend's car, you know, out of a can, you know, with a car oh, on the sure, side and sure. everything. Coke can. Yeah. Coke can, swag weed, Did whatever. you tell your friends you were high? I did. No. I no. I was like, wow, weed's cool, fellas. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm, no. I'm floating. I'm in the zone. No, I was just like, I was like. Dis- I was a disappointed customer. You yeah. know? I was just like, this is not working. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, well, give it another try. <laughs> okay. They did uh, talk I, like that. I believe yeah, we all talk <laughs> like this. We were really, you want to <laughs> give it another try. <laughs> we worked on the stock market. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, and I, I didn't get high, and they're just like, well, you know, sometimes it doesn't work the first time, whatever. Then we had like a party maybe a couple weeks later at weirdly an, uh, a room in a motel above the room my family rented monthly until our house was ready when we first moved to Great Falls. That was pretty crazy. Like, what's the coincidence of that? It was like a party room above the the crash pad you guys were already in. It was like, no, it was like, um, it's just a hotel. You know, those like those motels, you know, that are those motor inns, those motor lodges, whatever. They have like the the railing on the outside and the sidewalks and then all the doors. Right. So it was that and it was two levels. But you had connection to that place already. Yeah, the one, the unit below it was the one that my family rented monthly. And then the party that I went to two weeks after smoking pot out of a can was in the the one above directly above which i thought was mind-blowing but so the first time i got stoned was above where i was living as a, as a small child when i first moved to that city out of a giant orange plexiglass bong mm-hmm. and i took like a mega rip because i was like i'm yeah. gonna fucking do this and i took a mega rip and went into the next room because there was an adjoining door you know to the other side so i went in there it was totally dark some of my friends were sitting on the bed. I sat on the bed. I was next to Ilse Apestagi, who was a um, an exchange student uh, from where's Paulo Coelho from? Uh, Colombia? No. Damn it! Uh, no, I, I no, would have no. Felt like a genius. Oh, Argentina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Very close. Uh, I felt, but I felt like I would have stuck to the landing so hard it, if it was true. It would have been. It would have been like yes. <laughs> he is from there. it would have been like that is the country that is he's the from. country he's from that's <laughs> fucking insane you shouldn't know that um, um but yeah it was just like like a crazy situation but then like it hit me and when it hit me i felt like i was gonna like fall off the bed i literally felt like people were on one side of the bed just lifting it up trying to like knock us off and i was like i'm gonna fall i'm gonna fall and Ilse was like don't worry you'll be fine i'm holding you you know whatever i was just like in the arms of this exotic human um but that was the first time and that that blew me away but that was more like holy shit it disoriented you yeah just disoriented me but acid was the one where when we, we like took acid, I didn't know what to expect. We were heading out of town because we thought we had this bright idea that we were going to try to make it out of town before we got high to be <laughs> yeah. to be high out of town. But we like took the hits before going out. To, uh-huh. And we were like on our way out. And then we made it like maybe I'm going to say 15 miles or oh something. Oh, my God. Like and you're driving. And we stopped. Yeah. And I got out of the car and everybody just was started just like being, you know, robots off of their leashes just running around going I love, I love, you know whatever and i was across the street across the road the highway i was across <laughs> the highway yeah um and in the ditch was one of those 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 construction barriers that are like orange and white striped but just the bar part not the horse part so i'm holding it i'm just stand up i get up onto the highway and i hold it and i'm standing in the middle of the highway and i cannot stop laughing i'm laughing hysterically holding this bar just with my hands thinking that it's so funny that I am this barrier in the middle of this road. And isn't it funny that I'm holding this barrier right now? That was really, that was all there was to go off. <laughs> but apparently that was, that was enough. It was insanity. Yeah. And that, and, that, and from that moment though, I mean, that was like where everything blew open. I was like, Oh shit. That, oh. That's where you were like, I'm me. Yeah. I'm this like, this is me now. Yeah. I, I felt like I discovered a whole world that, I had already, I mean, that we're all living in constantly, but you just got that, that layer just got peaked back or the, the, the curtain got peeled back and you're like, holy shit. Did your mom ever tell you anything about drugs? No. 
I think she was not into them, you know, even though she enjoyed alcohol and smoked cigarettes all the time. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's Dude, so funny. M- my mom told me a cautionary tale about her experiences on LSD. She was like, oh, you're not going to want to do that. It's dangerous. When I took it, I felt like my skin was melting into a thousand plastic orbs and the sun what? was a golden light with a, a with an infinite a, a tunnel vision and the universe was purple. Don't try that. And I'm like five and I'm going, I am doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how, that she is, made it sound so cool. <laughs> it was her cautionary. I was just like, that's 100% on the docket. Like that's... it will happen. Oh my god! I mean, that's that's when you know yourself. You're yeah. like, you're like, yeah. I hear what you're saying, and that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be like, me. Like, you've still never done acid, huh? Doesn't really work for me. You've, what have do you, you mean doesn't work for you? She's never whatever I've gotten. I've never really felt it. Okay, but it's so mostly been mushrooms. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, acid. I've acid tried. you'll get because it's yes. this, this big. I think acid's actually the most powerful drug it's, in the world. It's not very easy to get, you guys. Based on how little you actually it's use, it's pretty easy to get. You know, Reggie really? Watts. <laughs> Tap the guy easy in the purple. Fleece. But I want Harvard. Yeah, like, a- I want Harvard uh-huh. acid. I want psilocybin. You want, you want acid from Harvard? Yeah, the kind they were doing <laughs> in the seventies. From the uh, Harvard. Um, no, I mean, there's like the the thing is like <clears throat> when I was twenty one. We'd done acid in high school in Montana, and it was like it was okay acid, but you know it was probably cut with something. I don't know. I don't know how that ends up happening. How strychnine gets in there? I don't know why right. it's part of the formula, but anyways, sometimes there'd be a little bit of strychnine in the acid, so you get that kind of kind of gross, like I don't feel kind good. Of? Metal, yeah. metallic, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's not quite clean, and so I just this thought is feeling that, like my acid <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, well, th- so you you tasted the negative parts of the acid. You didn't get yeah. the, like, the super like badass part, but. So I just assumed that's what acid was like, and, yeah. and that, that's what I was used to. But then when I was 21, I was in Seattle. I was living in a band house up in Aurora, um, and uh, Pearl Jam, uh, Nirvana, Pearl, uh, Soundgarden, uh, close uh, uh, Mud Honey. It was Mud Honey. You were living in the Mud Honey <laughs> house. God, you guys, suck. you were at the Mud House. Well, how do you do that? Are you guys like an, a detective crew? <laughs> Sheesh. So you're living in the mud. Gosh. Huh? It's like we go by within five. <laughs> um five guesses. Um yeah, I'm living I've been living in this place and this and my friend shows up and he's like, I got this special acid. I'm like, what what's so special about it? It's he's like it's called Shock to Shiva. It's my friend Chuck, the drummer. He was just like really crafty. And and he's like, uh, it's called Shock to Shiva. It's supposed to be really clean. It's made by one of the guys who supplied the Grateful Dead. It was like the main acid guy for Grateful well, Dead. That's what they call um provident providence. What's that? With art, in art, yeah. the way that you know that you have real, genuine, a real Van Gogh is because it's got providence, which is like, oh, it would belong to the Van Gogh Museum, and then it was connected back to the the Dutch mm. royalty, but then they were connected to the Van Gogh's family. So this is like with I acid, see. the ultimate providence is these guys supplied the Grateful Dead, and you're like, okay, this sounds good. It sounds, sounds clean. completely legit. Um, I'll take your word for it. I mean, the the paper was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was Shiva, all really dark blue white lines for the drawing part of it and so and then they were big they were big uh almost stamp sized hits oh, which was school. unusual right that is and, unusual and i was like and i guess apparently back in the day that's how it was like those were the size and now it's like they 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 make it more concentrated so a smaller square is equal uh-huh. whatever anyways i took the one and it rocked my shit like it rocked my world in a way that i'd never experienced before and it was the cleanest high like i remember wasn't grinding my teeth in any way i didn't feel that strychnine thing it was just a full epiphany and when that happened i like i became instantly vegetarian wow. mm. i started studying uh algebra and then getting except in except for chomping pussies yeah well there's that yeah that's <laughs> that but that was automatic that was always there that's that's automatic yeah yeah that's automatic <laughs> yeah wait it opened up algebra for you like yeah, I, I was terrible at math. Like I was terrified of algebra. Like when we started doing algebra, I was like, I can't do that. You know, I just was, I just shut down. I got terrible grades in math at that point. But I was into algebra or sorry, sorry, sorry. Geometry, geometry, mm. sacred geometry. So I got, and then I got into sacred geometry. Exactly. And that's what, that was started my new age period. Uh-huh. I basically was kind of, an Inya David Lon's Deep Breakfast. Oh, uh, I love Deep Breakfast. Ray Lynch. Yes, Ray Lynch. Oh my God! See, this is it. how I was imagining you, but this was later. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is yeah, this is twenty one. Me. <laughs> this is drugs. Just dr- like drugs. Me. Drugs. Drugs reborn. Me. I guess. This, hold on, I just have to stop you. Yeah. For the listeners, if you get want to get stoned, or even if you don't get stoned, 
check that out. Go to YouTube, YouTube Ray Lynch Deep Breakfast. Listen to the whole album. It is such a banger. It's what and, is and it a banger? A, it's what Moshe puts our kid to sleep. He's, he's like forgotten. Driving. He's he's a forgotten man. You know. No, he's 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 dope. I mean, Ray Lynch was dope. I think he was a Seattle guy. Yeah, and I think all of his synthesizers got like last. I googled him recently. Yeah. it was like Ray Lynch's synthesizers have been <gasps> robbed. And no, he's just like I. Oh if my He's God. alive. He's not making music anymore. And God, it was so good. Deep it was breakfast. it was really good. It was like I mean, Spirogyra. Mm-hmm. You know, there was all this like new age music that kind of they were like holdovers or they kind of evolved from fusion groups like the fusion the jazz fusion movement in the 70s spawned off this kind of like synthesizer ambient but kind of spiritual music that would be that would be known as new age music. it's you reggie i just realized it it's like it new age at that time it means something so different now now it means you yeah. don't believe in COVID and you drink your own piss but <laughs> at, at that time new age and tech was this weird synthesis of like dork like psycho not dorks yeah. who are like taking synthesizers and going oh we're not just going to play classical music with these electric pianos we're going to like t- weird them out and make them mm-hmm. it's like mean things yeah and it's almost like a it's like it's almost a cultural representation of like you at that moment like your For tech sure. your psychedelics and you're like this individual that's going to do things your own way i i think so yeah i mean it felt like you know my two favorite things science and art Right, and it's like that's exactly what those that's what that new age music was. It was like the science, or all the synthesizers and the technology, or whatever. But it's mixed with like the reason why it's made and what it sounds like is evokes a spirituality and an art to it. And so, I think yeah, that made that made sense for me. I was like, I, I was like, I need something. Oh, that's the fuel that I need. That's the backdrop. That's the music of my life. I have a question. Yeah. So you know how you like <laughs> had this fast. had this <laughs> new. Um, you know, this new epiphany for yourself. How many of those do you think one has in their life? Like, well, do you, a good question. do Ooh. you think there's another one for you? Oh man. I, I, I e me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All of us. And by I you, I mean me. <laughs> I mean, I get it for you. It's like, let me look at the, let me pull a card. Oh, I see justice. No, um, but I'm thinking I've never really even tried acid. So like what happens if there's like another version of me that I can find out about? Mm. Well, you got to find the guy that hooked up the Grateful Dead to get that shot. Yeah, yeah. Shiva. Yeah, if he's still alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if he's still alive, you got to get it from him. I mean, of course, there, of course, there's like, you can make an epiphany. I mean, also it's scale, right? Epiphanies happen on small scales. Sometimes, you know, if you're talking about like a major life thing where you're like, holy shit, I understand a different way of doing something a radically different than the way that I am doing it. I mean, that certainly can happen at, at any time. And, and also it doesn't have to be like changing something radical about how you live life or what you do it's just a different viewpoint that you incorporate a new understanding a new understanding yeah. that's a cool idea so I, it's yeah. not like your life has to go crazy no but you just shift your thinking as yeah. you get older i think it, it is harder to break through all the accrued information and belief systems that you've uh, collected throughout the course of a long life when you're a teenager you're like seeking like a paradigm shift and when you're when you get older, you like live in a kind of mo- more of a permanent paradigm, and it takes more to break through it. it, it it's harder, for sure. for sure. But I think you have an advantage in that you've never done a real psychedelic, <laughs> and so you could get cracked <laughs> wide open. I mean, you could be that'd be cool. You could be single by next year. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, speaking of uh, being single, uh, let's see oh. if we can help any of our. Yeah. Lost Ooh. single this souls who call in. People? This is so fascinating. I could talk about it all they night. Might but not you're be right. Single, we got though. callers. We got callers. Well, they're, they're waiting, waiting for us. Waiting honey. on the line for some of this wisdom. But Reggie, yeah, I love waiting. talking to you. And also, can you tell us a little bit what your book's about? Yeah, it's just an autobiography and talks about why I'm the thing that is here. I mean, it's a fascinating story. I want to read it. Yeah, I think we got, I, there's an audio book version of it too. If you want, did hear you me. like doing Maybe the audio book? It's a lot of work. It's uh, a lot of work. It, it was. It was cool in moments. It was definitely a marathon. Right. Like I had to really pace myself and be patient. But it's obviously the best mode to hear of someone you like. Yeah. For like read a book. Like I, I so. already like books on tape, but you can have the actual person you're reading about read to you. It's so cool. And also, yeah. you, you know very well how every line is supposed to be read. Like, you really, <laughs> how did you like That's the? True. How did you like writing the book? I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's well, it's fun. It's a uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it was sometimes it was really, like really easy, just a lot of dictation, and then sorting through dictation. 
basically. Well, Moshe, when he writes, he wants you to like, I've noticed this about you. I hope that I can say this. You can say it. You I know what you're going to say, and I'm embarrassed by it already, but oh, it's true. No. He immediately wants someone to read it. I want to read it to her. Like the uh. second he writes it. Oh, I got you. And then when I'm not here, I'll, he'll like send it to his brother. Like it's I a get weird, it. Yeah. But that's like not you how I reflection. write at all. Like I would never write. Like I need to like think of a million things, get high for two days, yeah. write it out, ask five people, you know, like it's just not how I write it all. I see you have not read the thanks and acknowledgements portion <laughs> of my book. Oh man. I'm waiting for the audio book. I want to, I didn't do the thanks and acknowledgements in the, in the audio book. You decided Did you? not to. They, they said, don't bother, don't. You oh, acknowledged okay. me in your book? Yeah. And I specifically <laughs> around, of course, but specifically around this. I said thank you to Natasha who suffered through my poetry slam style readings of every oh, paragraph oh, I wrote immediately go. when I was oh, done. Oh, see, I didn't even know and I didn't wow. know that you knew that I knew that that's, that it's was like true. a tick of how you wrote. That's so cool. Yeah, Moshe well, also has a book. I do. We have co-books and you can get them yeah. both. Cooks. Cooks. It's called Cooks. It's with Reggie Watson, yeah, and Moshe two, two books. That's Great Falls, Montana by Reggie Watts by the audiobook. Well, you're a fascinating man. I have you really are, and you're such questions. a deep thinker. No, it's true. But maybe he could help our people. Let's have him let's help, help some people. people. Let's help the it's people. It's ridiculous. Yeah, maybe you can help this person find a hookup on some clean clean acid, and maybe maybe a uh, a shamanic guide. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Would you call yourself a travel hog? <laughs> I would call myself a traveler for sure. Well, when you travel as much as Natasha and I do, it can become very difficult to even imagine somebody improving on the bag, but base just did that. Let's just cut right to the base. I love this. This bag, I cannot walk down the airport runway or whatever the hell it's called. You're always on that runway. <laughs> without people stopping me, telling me they love this bag. I got it in, it's this beautiful canvas color. I had six pairs of shoes in the bottom, there's like a little zip compartment. Oh, I can carry my entire luggage with this bag. The zip compartment, and it really does. It's like at the bottom of your carry-on. It really does show you the difference between you and me and between men and women. You use it to have a really um, safe place to put your shoes. I use it for dirty clothes. It's like a, a it's like a hamper built into the bag. And then when you open up the bag, you don't see any of the stuff. That's, it's like this beautiful, oh, you awesome. know. I got stopped at Stag Provisions, a world renowned spot for men's fashion all the employees were like what's that bag what's that bag well it's base we've all been there trying to fit everything that we think we need for a trip into a teeny little bag base has got you covered and i love this thing also it's designed by actress model and world traveler shay mitchell so she knew exactly what was missing in the travel bag for real for real for people that travel as much as we do we cannot tell you how excited the base bag made us and how chic the thing looks. I swear. We should just post of, a picture of it. No, it's awesome. They've thought of everything. There's a 360 degree gliding wheel. There's a cushioned handle. The oh, they have the little things you can put it on top. It's like it's a carry on bag, but it's as big as your main bag that you bring on. But it has a, that little thing so you, it can slide over your suitcase. It's so chic. It's so cool. Really, I am so happy to have it in my life. Right now, Base is offering our listeners. And it, by the way, it is spelled... B E I S. Base is B E I S. They're offering our listeners 15% off their first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash honeymoon. Go to basetravel.com slash honeymoon for 15% off your first purchase. That's B E I S travel.com slash honeymoon. We're going to call Isabel. 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 <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> Isabel from Argentina by way of Los Angeles. Hi, Isabel. There, Isabel. Hey. It's Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Reggie Watts is here. Hey. How you nice doing? To see you guys. How old were you the first I'm time you tried acid? Good. <laughs> Just seventeen. Seven. All right, there you go. <laughs> wow. So about okay. The right time. I go. like nice, it. Nice, nice. I like it. Nice. You can't come to this podcast wearing tie dye and not get asked a hard hitting question like that. <laughs> Uh, so, Isabel, how can Good we help one. you? So, basically, I am thinking of moving in with my boyfriend. We used to live together, but we want to live together this time with two bedrooms. Mm. And Civilized. I basically want to get your guys, yeah, maybe, we'll see, your guys' take on that. Um, and I have some context. We When we lived together last time, it was COVID, and we moved from Chicago to my home city, um, 
and lived in a back house together in my parents' backyard. It was one a one room house. So it's always been and less than ideal. Yeah, yeah. And but we um, we like took a break after a while because it got really irritating. And then for like two years, we've been living separately from each other, and it's been really great. And we love each other, and it's awesome. And I think we're closer because of the independence. But now it's like it's hard to figure out if it's if we're gonna be like roommates if we live in separate rooms or if it's just a really smart and cool thing to do that would be easy to manage both ways. I don't know. Oh, I didn't realize you guys were going to each have a bedroom. That seems weird. Yeah, that's a, I yeah. mean, it's kind of a cool idea, but it's not, I haven't heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, cause here's the thing. What if you had like a bedroom you shared and then a cool TV room slash office that's both of yours that you share? So that you're sleeping together yeah. like a couple, but then you're utilizing the second space as an office or a hangout space. But right? I, but that seems I, like but, the but, obvious but, thing to do. Yeah, but your idea is that you want to you want to kind of graduate from the autonomy that you have and kind of you're living together, but you're still maintaining a form of autonomy. This. Actually, yeah, exactly. I kind of want this now. Not that I <laughs> wait, wait. Can you tell me more about this? So you have your own bed. It's like right, your that's bedroom. Actually, that's all the time we've got. You but decorate thank you. it how you want. <laughs> wait, I like this idea. Kind yeah, of. That's exactly. A hard, it found, sounds very modern. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it seems modern. I, I think you should <laughs> I try it. In practice. I think you should. Yeah. Try. Personally, I, here's why I think you should try it is because it's not a. It's not like an. It's not a normal idea, and not, not necessarily not an abnormal. But you know, what I'm saying like most people would be like, "We're gonna move in. We got an extra room, so we have a TV room now, right. you no, know, whatever." Or I have an office, something like that. But it's very specific, like <laughs> what you want to do. And I think it's 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 like you you know you make your own rules in life, and and you're young enough, you might as well just give it a try. I don't and know. That's, only, my, that's my vibe. I think Reggie's exactly right. But the only issue I see is like you guys forgetting to have sex and making like ha having <laughs> romance in any way. So what if you yeah. go into it? Hey, with would you some... like to come over? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you want to come going... to my place? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> same thing, but you live next to each other. <laughs> but with some kind of sexual goal almost in mind, like or, or a, a setup, like is there a way to like a quota? Yeah. I don't, not even quota a quota, system. but just being like mindful of like... Look Look at that thing behind you, that piece of paper right behind you. You just write in every other day, sex with boyfriend. No, <laughs> I don't boyfriend know. Sex. It'd be nice, though, to have some kind of... What classifies as sex? Uh, like going down on each other is enough. <laughs> no, I, but also, also, you already have your natural cadence, right? In your separate, your separate places that you live. Right? Can you like yeah, kind of just yeah. do that? I mean, it is weird when you like live in the same bathroom and all stuff. But is it possible to maintain that cadence? I think so, but I can't tell if I'm being idealistic or not. Like, if it's just like a concept that seems really awesome. Which part? And then when it, what you're living concept? Together, the the thing that they're living, talking the about whole, living together or two separate bedrooms and in, in, in lovers two having separate two separate bedrooms. Well, I'm, I'm asking you. Is it what? Yeah, which like, thing? like space to yeah decorate my, myself Got and it. also like if I'm in a bad mood or I won't just want to like make something or talk to somebody else who's not him i can like be there and or like even just if i need to sleep for like 12 hours yeah. like listen i can I, do that i'm sold i guess my other question is <laughs> are, are there any other uh common spaces in the house so will you guys yeah, share a I mean, kitchen I, I would be moving into where he lives now with a roommate and she would be moving out I and it, see. it's like so i already know the place pretty well it's like a living there's a living room and a kitchen and like a kitchen nook so you have and plenty of space really nice. to have, you know, work as a couple to see if it works out. Hey, he never cleans up after yeah. himself. Hey, you know, you're going to have these shared spaces to see if you're compatible in that way. I, I, so I don't think it's weird yeah. to have the bedroom. No, I don't think so. I think it's innovative. Is it also to save money? And inspiring. <laughs> Just I mean, I don't think it would save that much money. You just want to live LA closer. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just like the little things of building a life together. We missed, I see because we were kind of doing that, but it's it's impossible and like having to know, share foot yeah. by fifteen foot. Having to share a bedroom with 
men who have jizz socks and whatever. I don't have I'm not jizz. saying you. I've never had a But jizz. I have. Who, okay, who but I'm just saying. It's disgusting. <laughs> women, it's like, it's hard to, I mean. We're not is, the ones that have a monthly blood cotton collection. Exactly, though. We all I'm just have saying, different things. I like this idea of your own space, you know? I'm convinced with one, I have one thing that I'm not convinced by. One tiny thing. I think you should okay. do it. Of course you should do it. But I think you're afraid, both of you are afraid of this trauma that happened in the past, mm-hmm. right? During our great blip, where you guys moved in together yeah. in an unclean way. Like you didn't need to, you were at the wrong stage in your relationship to move in, but the absolute right stage in the global society to move in. So <laughs> you made this decision yeah. based on these like acts of God th- or acts of the lab leak of Wuhan, China, depending on who you ask. <laughs> Completely. That's it. Yeah. Um, at, that, that then created, you know, a, a predictable result, which was that it didn't work because you weren't ready. Now, in the regular arc of your relationship, this is the time that you would have been ready had we not all uh, gotten, yeah. gotten the, the COVID thing. But now that you're ready, you're going, oh, no, I've got this trauma memory of what happened when we moved in before. It was too small. There was a global pandemic. Natasha and I are still r- reckoning with the things that annoyed e- uh, us about each other over a, a three-year pandemic. And we were married and had a kid. So I lo- love this move-in thing. I just think you got to, both of you have to interrogate the trauma to get to get yourselves into, because the, the space, to be honest with you, my, my prediction you guys are going to do two separate bedrooms in about six months. You're going to be like, this is fucking stupid. What are we doing? One of you, you'll move into the same bedroom and then you'll turn that into an office. But maybe not. Maybe you guys will. You should be, let him spend the night in your room sometimes. Yeah. Maybe you guys will be unusual. At people. Oh, he would. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, feel yeah, like we'd for sure. That sounds time, cute. Like we'd... Having like sleepovers. I, yeah. I, I think it could be. Yeah. It could be as Moshe says. I, I, but, you know, I think like you just try it out and it's like you'll figure it out. I, I, I'm on that page too. Try it yeah. out and figure it out. I'm just saying. The best way to yeah. figure this out is to not just go in and go, the oh, whole issue yeah. is our space. So we're going to do space. It's to ignore the part where like the reason that you're calling yeah. for separate bedrooms is because it didn't work before. So you got to do both things. Yeah. Move in together, do your separate bedrooms, but also like get to the bottom of the thing that you're afraid of so that you can face it and be rid of it to make yourselves prepared for this loving journey. Okay, let us know how annoying <laughs> he is or if he's a great roommate. <laughs> I will. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's a cool idea. Yeah, it's interesting. I've thought about that. It's a crazy. Separate bedroom. T- it's crazy too, though, that like when you fall in love with someone, you have to be their roommate. Right. Like a roommate is like. Yeah. I don't no know one I, wants a roommate if they don't have to have I don't, one. I don't know if I'd do it. I think I'd still live in my separate house. Have you heard well, separate houses? No, these are pe- that's a new thing. Yeah. That's a modern relationship. It's like it a, is? we're married, but we don't just have separate bedrooms. We yeah. have separate domiciles. Yeah, exactly. No, no that's, that's a thing. the new thing that you're married, yeah, but you is. have separate houses. I'm not saying houses. it's the new thing. It's more common to have one house. Not, but but who do you it, hang out with? Bill Gates. I mean, <laughs> that's just, I think I read an article about it that it's like a it's a it's a modern version of romance. The crazy part is if someone told me that. Oh yeah, I'm married, but my wife lives in um, Hollywood, and I live in Echo Park. I would judge that person. Like I would immediately, uh, like my conditioning. What are you would, avoiding? Yeah, or something I like mean, that. I mean, you're clearly divorced. No, they, I don't. I think that this is a new iteration, like polyamory, like all these kind of deconstructions I live of old alone. institutions. Is I live, I have my own living space, but I'm married, and we, I spend the night there. She spends the night yeah, here. Yeah, there are I, people that have gotten houses right next to each other. That's interesting. And are, they're not divorced. No, and they're that, in monogamous relationships. No, I, I think I think it's like I think in a way it's smart. It depends on the type of person you are. But like for me, I'm an only child, so I require a lot of space. And yeah. sometimes I get resentful if I'm sharing space and I'm not necessarily communicating the best I can be. But um, I just know that my track record of living with people, I start to get agitated and I'm like, I really want it to be this way. Or you move into someone else's space or someone moves into your space. You know, then there's like, well, it's mostly your space. It started as your space. So in your mind, right. you're always like, this is this person's space and I'm living in there. So there's like, it kind of reconciles some of that. If you're both like, I like to have a lot of self time or whatever, like you, that, you know, yeah. I mean, it's something to try at least. You, you know can be, always not do it. You know what would be cool is two houses 
connected by a tunnel. Yeah, a hundred percent. That'd be kind of cool. A hundred percent. Wait, yeah. if Isabel, is, uh, if Isabel is still listening to, quick shout out to her. I think she's gonna have to do something to establish herself because she's basically slipping in as his old roommate. Right. Yeah. So it's like That's true. I think That's she needs to, be aware to, of. to take the common space and mm-hmm. make it their own in some kind You're of right. fun relationship way. I mean, yeah. that's true for our relationship. The first house that we lived in, um, actually, you lived there too. Um, oh yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> it was a space that Natasha had shared with another boyfriend, and I, I wasn't jealous of that. But it never fully felt like my place until we moved into this house. Like this felt like uh, it had c- c- tabla rasa to kind of, and it felt more like my home. Yeah, I get that. So there you go. That's sweet. So she should make a, a bedroom for herself to feel at home. Yeah, and like redo the living room yeah. and the yeah. kitchen together. And get rid of the jizz socks for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those They're jizz socks. I was not th- implying that you guys did that, but I did think that every man did it for some reason. Jizz sock? Why, <laughs> why would they? Just use a Kleenex. I guess because they've got Jesus. They've got Toilet socks paper. lying around and socks maybe do the job better. Because I, I asked I the same question. It's a product of being disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it. <laughs> but the Venn oh diagram. Oh my god, I'm so glad you're saying that because I I really thought all men did that. No, I've never <laughs> I've never in my life come in a sock. No, never, not one. Never, time. not one. Never. Time. I've definitely had I've had I've I've made love before to and, a sock. and it's been it's been messy. No, not even to a sock. Okay. I've I've had and there my t-shirt was on the floor sure. and I didn't have a towel. I'm like that. I'll use the t-shirt. Yes, I've done that. So I've done that. That's but I've never been self pleasuring feels... and then looked around desperately <laughs> yeah, totally. for. A Sock. Yeah, I can just see the the camera <laughs> shot, just like a glove, a, a plant, no, a tube of toothpaste. I a thought sock. they put the sock. Uh, uh, sock. I thought they put it on it because it was like an encasement. No, I mean, maybe, but no, that doesn't make sense I either. Mean, to be fair to Natasha, I have a joke in my act right now where I talk about. It, it's a long bit, but it's a, it's a, it's all about cum. And uh, and one of the punchlines is, is it's basically God saying the different places that it's supposed to go and, <laughs> and and i do say that one goes in a sock like i, I do I know it. about the trope yeah. of right. the man okay coming so in it's a sock. trope yeah. at least yeah it's okay. a trope for sure but it's not one that i've ever indulged in Ugh. yeah it's like i just i i know about it because of the legends of tour buses right and like don't pick up any socks that you find out in the, in the <laughs> hall it's like unless you know who sock you, you know, know what whatever. it's you know what that sock's filled with yeah mud honey yeah <laughs> that's right that's what that name means same with pearl jam we got some secrets yeah. What Wait, do you want to do? Take another call. Want, All right, let's take another call. Call in. You've got call in power. You we got well two things. We've got two formats, Reggie. We do deep dark secrets that people leave on our hotline, and then Ooh. we got calls. So we can do we can do it all. Just do it all. Okay, let's do another call. Now that Natasha's gone, I think this is a perfect yeah, time. Yeah, this is the perfect time. Who are we gonna call? I hope it's not a ghost buster. Oh, Jabby. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Gabby. What? No, nah, I don't think it's Jabby. Come on. In fact, the G is much less often making a J sound. Well, if it, we were in Holland, it would be Chabi. Chabi. <laughs> Chabi. Chabi. Let's call Chabi. Let's call Chabi. In the LBG. Let her, she's in Long Beach, you guys. Her name's Gabby. I'm sorry. Longest beach in the world. Hello. Hi, Gabby. How you doing? Hi. So it is pronounced Gabby. <laughs> What's up? It is pronounced Gabby, not Jabby. Yes, it is. Okay. Not Gabby. Okay, <laughs> like, or Gaby. Wow. Gaby. I, I, I used to get Gaby. Ugh. Gabby. On. That sounds fun. Come that on. sounds fun. It's Natasha, <laughs> Moshe, and the one and only Reggie Watts on the call for you. Morning. Yeah. So cool. Hi. I'm really excited. We're I love excited. your podcast, and I love you, Reggie. Thank you. Big fan. Well, how can we um, help, Gabby? Okay. All right, so um, my last relationship was a while ago. It was a little bit over five years ago, and it did not end well. It was bad, 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 but from both both ends, me, her. Um, and so when I ended it, I just completely seized contact. I just didn't want to do anything with her. It was just bad all around. But um, I, a few months after that, I realized I had some pair of earrings of hers. These earrings were really important to her because they belonged to her mom who died when she was fifth when her when my ex was 15. Um and I meant to send them back. Um, but I just really did not want to open the um, you know, the doors uh to let her back in my life. Uh I mean, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Regardless, I still have the earrings. It's been over five years. 
And I would like to give them back because I know that they probably mean so much. I just really don't know how to go about it. Mm, that's a good one. I like this. Yeah, I'd, I'd just send them back. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know where to live. I don't have an address. I mean, I mean. So you feel like you have to like start sleuthing around. And... Right. Yeah. What do you What do you have on her? The only thing I, I might have her phone number still uh -huh. from back then. Her oh, mom I see what you're saying. sending something to a mom is always yeah. Good. Mom She's dead. Is good. Their mom's, mom's dead. dead. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the primary okay. issue here. If, if, if the mom is gone, then the next option is a second cousin. <laughs> No, but but Gabby's saying um, Gabby's saying that she only has maybe a working phone number. Yeah. Well, if you were stalking her and trying to get back in touch with her, what would you do? I tried stalking her online, but she blocked me from everything. I see. What about so, friends? Yeah. Former friends that know? Never no. Why? We were dating for not that long. This oh, sounds like I'm I glad see. you're for not like with this months. woman. By the way, this seems completely toxic. What a no! I never met one of her friends. I she did never meet, met but one. Like we never. It was never anything. Like okay. it, was, it was like five months. But we do you know? Together. Do you know the names of any of those people that you hardly met? No. Okay. <laughs> this is Good. This is this great. Is, yeah. This I, is great. Well, I have a really hot tip for you. Oh, okay, Natasha. You keep those earrings, girl. No. And Melt you them give down. them to your next partner. Oh my God! This is the worst <laughs> advice you've given in the history of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It could be cute. Yeah, These yeah. are my ex's dead it's, mom ghost earrings. Don't say where they're from. It's an old druidic uh, tradition. It cleanses the objects. <laughs> oh my it? God! That's yeah. Crazy. Why not? Because you know what? It does sound dramatic to have to get back in touch with her. It just sounds annoying, and like it might put make I... you vulnerable in some way. And it seems like you're doing so good. Oh, it's this like is terrible. Yeah. Do not listen. To this, what? but Who you also cares about the if the girl cared about the earrings that much, you, she'd be you don't want to be holding on to them either, right? You got this karmic bag mm. that you May, carry with you. Maybe yeah. give them to someone to hold, like someone in your family or something like that, and just tell them to like hold on to it. And then at some point, you'll cross the road and like there'll be a thing, you know, I don't know. And then you'll be like, hey, I can get those things back to her. I, I have an idea. Do you know the name of the mother that died? I don't remember. You could, wow. could you find that? You basically, what I'm suggesting is you do some sleuthing, find the name of the mother, go to her grave. Exhume the body, <laughs> put the earrings on the body, and know. then rebit. No, you don't think so, Richard? I, I mean, that's not good advice. You don't think? actually. No, I'll just put a bookmark in that because that, that's possible. <laughs> but I, th I think, I mean, also, I mean, have you tried using AI for to to track generally. this person down? Wait, does I, AI help you find people? Well, AI right. can scour more websites. I would uh -huh. use the Arc browser. It uses multiple. It scans multiple. It basically, it browses for you. So it will like do a ton okay. of like cross referencing automatically for you. Okay, you're not gonna okay. like my next question. Uh oh. Sure. Can I just see them? <sighs> oh, they're stored if... away. Oh, okay. sure they yeah, are. I mean, <laughs> sure they are. <laughs> Was your girlfriend from Canada, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gabby. Wait, I got it would take five minutes? Yeah. Well, well no, I do. Okay, okay. Gabby, I have an idea. I just wanted to see, like, because maybe I would buy them from you and you could give the money to charity or something. No, I have a cool well, idea. That's cool. I have a cool idea. I think this is a cool idea. Okay. Okay, this is real. Stand by for a cool idea. Okay. A CI coming at you. Get the earrings. Are they worth money? They're just sentimental. Here's what I think you do. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Okay, go ahead. Put the earrings in a box. Write on the, a piece of paper the, the first and last name of your ex and their phone number. Send them to us oh, at yeah. the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we will attempt to get them back to this person in your stead. And they were donated and we won't, it'll be anonymous, right? We'll say we're the Endless Honeymoon Wait, Podcast. how would anyone ever find it? Like, and we're known to find <laughs> rare family heirlooms. <laughs> Well, what I'm I mean, she knows I have them. We're known. Wait, she knows you have them and hasn't contacted you? She knows you? I have them. You kind of want to contact her. I can tell. No, no, no. I Because, no, I'm just saying like that would... What I'm saying is so we're no. not we're not blocked on her social media. Exactly. True, and we don't true, true. And we don't care about texting her. Yeah. We'll say, hey, your ex has your earrings and she sent it to us. We're a comedy podcast. I know that makes sense. <laughs> We, yep. we we want to send them to you, and we'll send them. A, okay. We'll send her a DM, and it'll come from us, and then you, it'll be a, a third party, okay. a third party. Yeah, a broker. And, and by the way, I'll I'll, I'll tell you this. <laughs> and if, if I like them, can I wear them for a couple days before we give them away? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess so. Yeah. Here's the deal. If we <laughs> it's only fair. If we don't. <laughs> Thanks, if Gabby. we don't. If we are unable. 
if we are unable to contact this person or they don't contact us, we'll send you the earrings back and they're yours to keep. Unless one yeah. falls out when I'm like on the dance floor or yeah. something. And we'll return sure. your money. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, your money back. <laughs> yeah. You get a money back guarantee right. here. All right. We'll do it okay. for you. We will do it in your stead. We'll be like, um, you know, this is like a uh, heavyweight, the podcast heavyweight. We're going to, we're going to heal an old wound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then the okay. and and then you'll know when that's been done, when the task has been completed, and then you can like alleviate the the bird. Well, because the thing is, it it's it's weird. The weird part is that she knows you have these unbelievably sentimental items from her dead mother, and hasn't gone. Where's my earring? Yeah, or send somebody to contact you. That doesn't make any sense. That's the part that's it's really true. hard. I don't like that she doesn't know anyone that you know. But there's a lot not to like in this story. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot. I don't like this person. <laughs> Maybe they could grow, <laughs> but <laughs> at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck, Gabby. Not good luck. Thank you. Good. You wish us good luck. Yeah, you wish us <laughs> yeah. good luck. Yeah, good luck. If you're going to uh, send it to us, we will do our best to find this okay. person. We'll use the power of the internet and our Patreon to see if we can send the hordes of honeymooners out to try to find them. And if we can't, we'll just send you the earrings back and then you can keep them. And okay. the karmic weight of those earrings will not weigh upon you anymore because you said, yeah. I tried. I did what I could. Yeah. yeah. We'll, okay. we'll we'll get All your right. info in the uh, in the transition. Yeah, Laura yeah. will. Reggie's our you. booker. We actually only go through him now, so don't address us directly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the episode where it's announced very casually. Yeah, we're gonna send. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send you Reggie's personal cell phone number and just open up a text relationship between the two of you. Yeah. you can contact him whenever you like, m- night or day, and he'll advise you in just general stuff, just anything you ever need. Sounds great. Okay, and we'll send you. Five hits of Shakti Shiva acid too, yeah. just to open you oh up. Oh my god, yeah, your first five free hits. <laughs> well, the first five hits are free. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So All right. Generous. Thanks, Gabby. All right. Thank Gabby. you. I'm excited right. about this. Rock and roll. This I like want to see what the earrings adventure. looked like, though. Like, well, you're gonna. She's gonna send them to you, and you can put them on the screen of our own podcast. I've yeah. noticed that my stylist friends they they always talk about clothes like they have lives. They're like, yeah, she's been she's had fun. Nope. That, you know, you hate it. No. <laughs> and I can't. <kidding. laughs> they always talk about like the clothes. Like, I'm like, you still wear those? Oh, I've, I've, you know, yeah, she's seen some times, mm-hmm. you know. Well, people name hair clips. The, 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 and, and I'm no. like, I can't. They I can't. name their hair clip? Like, yes. they've had fun this with This is Letitia. The- and this Are is Bubba. I mean, I can imagine a wig or something, you know, that like is like a big part of your transformation as a character. Right. That makes sense to me. It's like you have a relationship to it, whatever. It but gets not taking those tight but, pants out for a spin. Yeah, not like little like things that are just like you wear once in a while. It's like this one has, this is Fred and this is Toronto. You never, and this is, you never feel sentimental for an object? Like you don't want to throw it away because you're like, oh, this is my. I never have. Like, you know, the whole thing about like, oh, you got it. What's the name of your car people calling cars she and uh-huh. stuff i i don't i don't know I, the, to me they're objects they're machines right, i've so. never met anyone who pressured me to name my car that's so cool do you, you have a good life <laughs> yeah that's yeah, most people life. most people walk through that trauma constantly yes <laughs> yes yes that's that's amazing you've avoided quite a bit Man, uh, 43 jeez <laughs> reggie yeah do you have time for a couple secrets yeah. before we say goodnight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's I was perfect. saying the outfit thing because I was thinking of those grandma's earrings might want to oh, go for a spin. I see, oh. I see. Because I see, they're see. like the dead. I mean, but I, yeah, that's I not, it's about, just an object. I've been it's thinking, just yeah. some metal. I wonder what you think of this. Yeah. I've been thinking about this quote a lot from this uh, old mystic rabbi that said, um, some men have hearts of stone and some stones have the hearts of men. Ooh. And it's like about the idea of like sacred space, you mm-hmm. know, about like that some buildings, some and they, they aren't all churches or synagogues. Sometimes it's like a warehouse that you that people used to party in. Like I think about that with my old rave thing, like you drive by an abandoned warehouse that has been empty for 20 years, but it used to house like people's uh, night on the freeway moments, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and mm-hmm. like the, these spaces that become stages, you know, like yeah. a stage where you started comedy or just like these kind of. They're inanimate, but they have animation from the For memories sure. in them. For sure. I think there's definitely an energy in objects and an energy, like a, uh, you know, like a, a memory energy or memergy. 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 So it's got memergy. So you show up to a theater. Yeah, of course. So you're like, oh, this is where the thing, or this is where the thing, or a location where major things happen. You're like, it, right. of course. It's like, it's it's going to activate a memory. And I think that that's completely true, 100%. I think it's a little bit different when you're, like, it's a hair clip. like here's my hair clip or, or here's my wallet <laughs> yes, and I fair. call it Franklin. That is you know, I, which I, I get. I'm not, I'm not gonna like down on anybody. I'm just saying I have never done that. I'm just like, here is my wallet. This is my car. I will name the car if I'm 
you know, like in an app. Yeah. I'll name the car, but I don't refer to the car as that name. Okay. Oh, tell us the name of your car, Reggie. Bronwyn. <laughs> okay, I have a I have a question for yeah. the three for everybody. Yeah. It's kind of like a hot girl. Like Bronwyn feels like oh, the yeah. hot girl in like Claire's friends. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Bronwyn. it's Bronwyn. And, <laughs> um, what is the inanimate object that you care the most about? I in a fire, you can only about. keep one thing. I'd probably say my my flashlight. Really? Yeah. Is it like an old flashlight from? I know. I just always have it on me. You just—it's a—it's a flashlight. I wear it. Yeah, it's my EDC. Yeah, it definitely. In a fire, you, that's what you're grabbing. A hundred percent. Yeah, Your it's flashlight. the most useful object. How how does it go on a keychain or something? No, it's not a. It doesn't go on. It's pronounced keychain. Jesus. Wait, uh, every you day just, you leave the house with a flashlight? Yeah. But you could just replace that This is going to be the best flashlight hour. any well, of us have so ever had. I don't had. know if I have it on me because I, for some reason, moved it to some Is this flashlight weird. in Canada? Be honest. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. It's like I met this flashlight in Canada. I bought it in Canada. Uh, maybe I don't have it on me, but, but wait, it's, a, yeah, it's a surefire stiletto. So you just have no sentimentality about things. I mean, I'm trying to think of, I mean, obviously, like, pictures of my mom you know yeah um, I, I don't count family that. things okay well d- yeah a, there's a, not a, really a, a trinket a thing there's, interesting yeah it's like if i if i think really hard i, I mean it's really has to comes down to the things that i carry every day right right and like the flashlights like car key's not going to help um you know other things are not as helpful to me it's like flashlight is great because it's a useful tool. It illuminates things. It's also a tactical flashlight, so it has like a little bit of defensive aspects to it. It also can protect you by shining it in someone's eyes if you need to get away. A thousand lumens, they can't see for two minutes. You're you're the fuck out of there. Oh, it's a weapon at it's, night? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tactical flashlight, so and it has a if, tail switch. What about the idea that our phones have a flashlight? It's not fast enough. Mm. Like I'm, I'm pulling out my flashlight so fast and lighting shit up at exactly the brightness I want to instantaneously. A phone is like such a piece of shit as a flashlight. It's That's a secondary a cool idea. So it's kind of a flashlight. I want my own bedroom and, and a, a flashlight and a, and that flashlight. looks to tactical my belt. Flashlight. <laughs> Can I get that tactical flashlight? Yep. What's your? How much is a, a top end flashlight running? Well, that flashlight, for some reason, when you compare it to other flashlights that do the same thing, is like almost like a hundred and. Thirty dollars more expensive, which mm-hmm. is stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me, because and I've tried these other flashlights. Like Olight makes great flashlights. Um, Nightcore makes great flashlights. I've just gone one, down you know, some flashlight some rabbit holes. <laughs> rabbit oh, I have a lot of flashlights. Nightcore makes makes a great flashlight, but you know what makes an even better one? What's that? Night Court. That's multicam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> is Bull on the remake? On the on the remake? No, Bull didn't make the cut. Natasha, what's your um, inanimate yeah, object your, you're grabbing in a fire? Yeah, your NM. I would grab my um, chanting beads probably because I have like some sentimental there value. There we go. To That's them. what I'm looking Sick. for. But it's pretty similar to a fly. It's nothing like that valuable. Well, but it's something you use all the time. Oh, because that's probably what I would want. Yeah. If I was in a hurry, if I, there was an issue, I would feel like that would give me power. Mine's very similar yes. to Reggie's actually. It sounds similar anyway. It's my, my flashlight. No, I would pick. Yeah, it's close. It's close. One it letter off. So similar. We yeah. did Bobby Lee's podcast yesterday, and he told us his flashlight had mount. You could mount it to a wall. A wall mount. <laughs> <laughs> it had hardware. It's terrible, but I do know that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that that's true. I've heard about that. Yes. I have two things that I would. That do. now that's worse than jizzing in a sock, right? Yes. <laughs> a wall-mounted flashlight is definitely worse. I have two things I would grab. <sighs> I would either grab my uh, my they're basically my prayer beads. They're called to fill in the for the the thing that I got at my bar mitzvah. The thing you've never used. I've never used it. Well, You're just copying me, Moshe. You've never <laughs> even used that. Okay, this is a, a blatant attack. Um, Wowzers! I, 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 I'm yes, shocked you're right. that you're saying I'm that. I'm not the Jew. Um, th- I'm not You're as looking much of for a, it. <laughs> I'm just not the Jew uh, to the Buddhist that you are. I didn't. I, I know that Buddhism. No, is, you could I, be a Judist. Thank you. Thank no, you. I, I'm just. Sho- I'm. I'm the thrilled thi- and shocked by this You're answer. You're thrilled by this. <laughs> I'm glad the that other, you did that. It's sentimental. It doesn't have use. It's very much the opposite of you, Reggie. It's. Uh-huh. I never. I never use it, and yet it has great sentimental value. Uh. And then there's also a Hopi. Um, flint bag that my grandmother bought like a hundred years ago or whatever Whoa. that I have framed. Uh, More that useful. I, that, I, that I would 
Yes, nah, or you know what I mean. Practical. But would yeah. it be weird to take a framed painting with you? Because we're talking like end of the world. We're getting in the no, RV. I'm talking the house is on fire. Yeah, not the end of the world. Just uh, the house is on fire, yeah. and you have to. There are different <laughs> crisis states. Yeah, totally different. If the world was ending, I wouldn't grab anything because it would be ending. <laughs> All right, let's play some secrets. Okay, Seacrest. Let's play some Ryan Seacrest. Oh my God, some Ryan's. Hey, honey. Yeah? I love the way you look. What's your secret? Are you talking about my tits again? Well, I always kind of am, but I was really talking about your new honey love stuff. Well, I love honey love bras. I've had people even come up to me and ask me, do you really like these bras or are you just doing an ad for their podcast? Yes, I love their bras. They also have shapewear. Yes, shapewear. They have revolutionized compression technology so you no longer feel like you're suffocating while wearing it. That's our dog. He likes Honey Love too. We've put him in a really nice compression technology dog suit. No, I'm just kidding. They don't sell one of those, but they should. They should because it reduces anxiety. Anyway, I want to tell you about a very special deal that Honey Love has given our listeners. You can get 20% off right now on your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash honeymoon. That's right. You can get the bras. You can get the shapewear. You can get it all for 20% off by just going to honeylove.com slash honeymoon. Also, if you want the look of an underwire bra without that outdated underwire crap, go to Honey Love. These bras are hot. They're comfortable. Sometimes I forget I'm wearing a bra. I am not a kind of person who we- I'm not the kind of person who wears a bra normally because, you know, I have some very Perky. full, full A's, yeah. big, juicy A's. They're approaching A minus. But I have to say, I really love wearing these bras. You so. do. You have milky A's, honey. And if you <laughs> want to get your milky A's looking p- perky and plump, just like Natasha's, do it. Get some shapewear. Go to honeylove.com slash honeymoon. Get 20% off. Support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash honeymoon. Hi, I'm calling from Miami, Florida, where I live just outside of uh, Biscayne uh, Bay. Okay. And my secret is that I often like to urinate off the 21st floor of my apartment. I love it. Late at night into the bay and... There's worse things That's in so there, but beautiful. I was a little, I would be a little concerned if anybody was actually in the apartments when it was happening. Anyway, that's my secret. I also like to flush the toilet uh, before I urinate. I don't know if they're too related, but uh. thanks again, everybody. He lost us. <laughs> No, this is something I just talked about on Alison Rosen's podcast. He flushes it before he pees. I do it. Like almost the minute I start peeing, it's involuntary. I've tried to stop because I know that it's wasteful. And I never knew that other men did it. And I did Alison Rosen's podcast. She has a segment called Am I the Only One? And I did it. And all these guys were like, I do that too. I do that too. It's so weird. I've tried to stop Reggie and I can't. Like psychologically something happens. I wonder if it's linked to like need and like encouraging you to urinate. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's like a turbo booster. (laughs) You're just like, well, I'm starting to urinate. Now just add a little bit more turbo. A little torque. Yeah, a little torque. Listen, if I'm on my fourth floor balcony and all of a sudden I smell something and feel this like a little hot whiz, spray. Hot, hot spray, hot spray coming right in front of my well, face. Well, warm. I'm pissed. I, I he think he is too. <laughs> I, I am just like that's not okay. I'm not. Ga- I'm gonna no, say something. What would you do? You'd go up to the 23rd floor and say, "Excuse me, were you?" The no, man as he was peeing, I after it was done, you'd I'd be like, a, "That's disgusting." You'd probably send a, send a drone. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> It, he would stop <laughs> he would stop for sure yeah he'd be like stop pissing on my whatever but yeah. don't ever turn up and yell at him because then you get a hot load of piss oh that's yeah, 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 don't yeah. ever turn I your head I get that up. it feels good yeah king of the well, world well yeah king of the world yeah king of the world it's like a, a definitely form I go in my front yard yes a I lot. do that too I do yeah. that as well but I grew up in Montana going out in the yard anyways like yeah. we just went we went outside a lot so you a wood shitter a what? No. Never have? No, nah, I don't like that shit. I've, sh- I've shit in the woods. You're, it's all right. You, you, I'm a it's leaf. Mid. I'm a, I've been a leaf. It's mid. It's a mid experience. <laughs> I've been a leaf wiper, and that's what's the bad. Low key bad. High key bad. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> leaf wiper. I, I don't know. Ever, I think if I was going in the woods, I'd bring the portable bidet. Yeah, but the squeeze bottle. Yeah, yeah, that, that's smart. Well, but, me and Ricky were just in Sacramento driving home at uh, eleven at night. 11 at night, uh, we had the nanny, our, our friend was helping us, who Fran was Drescher. working no. as a nanny for us. She's not telling the story. 
correctly. She left after after the late show was over. In the rain. During the great storm that began <laughs> last week. Because we didn't want to get stuck in Sacramento. So anyway, my point is though, we had to pee at some point and I didn't know where to pee. And we get to the, and we've got two kids in the back seat and they're like up eating candy at like four in the morning. And we pull into this car, you know, this uh, gas station, and we all decided there were too many men roaming around. To go use that makes sense. to go pee, and so we were saying, it, and then my daughter keeps asking me. She's like, "Why are there? There's too many men at this place." Like I wasn't making so anyway. Why your daughter all... Jaja Gabor? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then we ended up. So why peeing. do they all have handfuls of socks? We <laughs> tried to pull over in two different places to pee, and then Ricky and I finally decided on a Tesla area this Tesla is Lindholm. yes and we okay. just like got outside of the door and just peed because it was three in the morning we didn't it was like yeah would you rather go in the light at a te- at an empty tesla's charging there's a, there's an station or go go walk into the guy and have like the guy was like scratching his belly and like there's, smoking a cigarette yeah, and they were kind of like i don't you know go, you drive by a tesla charging stuff you go those seem like my people those seem like no, good people to piss around <laughs> i don't know what do you and do though high Where's voltage? i think that's smart actually oh yeah there is a lot of electricity it's a lot of electricity there. it's like it's it's risky yeah but women aren't really meant to like squat and pee like it was pretty humiliating like we're both just know naked <laughs> you know well it's, it's probably the most natural thing in the world well it's no. easier to step out and be standing female chimpanzees will find a stall <laughs> oh, did they find the stalls? Yeah, they go look for a so stall. So stall came from nature. Yeah, like that, that word. Yes, yes, one of the few. You would have learned that if you had shit in the woods. A few oh more my god, I knew it. I only had two more to get the shit in the woods badge. Um, you want to hear a shit in the woods story before we wrap this bad boy up with Schwoods. our final secret? Sure. Get it, Schwoods. It's one of the greatest s- stories I've heard of festival culture. You ever been to a rainbow gathering? Uh, I've heard of them. No, I haven't they're, been. They're an, an they're an annual gathering of hippies where. Nobody puts it on. It's just like the, the council calls what national forest it's in. And then like 40,000 hippies just arrive. And they will dig out um, latrines because it's literally in the middle of nowhere and it's 40,000 people. So they'll, they'll they'll dig out these latrines for every all the hippies to go piss and shit into. And then they cover it up at the end of the event, whatever. So there's this hippie girl that's... um on acid and ecstasy with oh, with, no. fa- with fairy wings oh, running through the rainbow gathering going i'm free i'm free i'm free running skipping i'm free and then just just like cartoon character like over the ditch into the latrine like just falls neck deep into like 40,000 gallons of hippie shit and like there has never, according to my friend, I didn't see this. There has never been a switch from like pure ecstatic, like just bliss, like your moment on the freeway, Reggie, mm-hmm. into like horrified bad trippedness. Like it was instantaneous. And all the hippies backed away and were like, we can't help. And then one like butch lesbian walked up, grabbed her, covered her in a blanket, and just disappeared with her into the woods to go oh clean her my off. God. <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> Wow. Right. Well, listen, should we hear one more secret, right. Moshe? Final secreto. Pop secrets. Hi. Hey. Um, <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I'm high. That's no, okay. Okay, <laughs> I ahead. have a secret that I think makes me a terrible person. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I can ever tell anyone <laughs> except for this. So, it's really cold here. Okay. And there's a homeless lady who just froze to death on the street. Uh-oh. I saw it on the news. Okay. Yep. And it's obviously okay. I feel terrible that homeless people are treated in such a way where the city will leave them to freeze outside in the elements. There's a butt coming. Mm-hmm. But when I saw that it was this particular homeless lady, I was like, oh, I know her. And out of the entire homeless population that I've had run into with just walking around in my town, she is the only one that I've had to deal with that was actively rude. And I would see her like every day. (laughs) Lady. Wow. And the secret is that I saw that she had died in this horrible way and i was like well one less thing to worry about for me oh lady and i know that's just awful it, it is wow her secret's a thought she had her secret is that she's glad that uh, someone uh, this, died this woman died because she was rude to her one yeah she was rude so Listen, she deserved death i'm going to i'm going to give this is the reason that this 
that this hotline exists is for people with actual de- I mean I love all the secrets but with people with actual like dark thoughts and mm-hmm. impulses to You're right. be able to so I'm going to give her a pass everyone's had a horrifying thought in their life 100% and I'm sure that this is not Okay but th- she does bring up a good question which let's get rid of the that they're homeless and yeah. that they froze to death obviously that's you know a, a horrible image and we're so sad that happened but when someone who is actively making your life worse dies, dies. can you be happy that ha- they died cuz ha- now your life is a little better happy can you be a little glad they died i you know i think it can be a part of a series of thoughts <laughs> there you go reggie this is very enlightened <laughs> You know, it, yes. you know this is the I mean? acid talking. Yeah, it's this is it's good. not like the thought. It's the like only thought. You get. I mean, there's going to be a. It's going to triangulate, and you're going to end up at an aggregate of. You're going to hopefully all. go up. Too. Yeah, you're going to go up. You yeah. know, but like at first, I mean, there might be like that honest. Like, there's an aspect of your brain that might have been preloaded that said like, if this person, if I didn't have to deal with this person anymore, that would be great. It wasn't necessarily linked to death, sure, but maybe that thought was loaded. And then when they heard about that, they're just like, well, that's one last thing I have to think, you know, but then, then it's like, but fuck, I mean, to freeze to death really sucks and so on and so forth. I don't, I don't know. Could be. It's like when your friend, you, you hear about a, a distant friend whose like show is canceled and like you've got a dirty impulse where you go like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. That's terrible. <laughs> no, actually, what I'm talking about is a little different than just being like career jealousy. It's like if someone's actively making, making your life, your life oh, harder. For sure. Yeah, that, that yeah. would like, make more sense. Let's say they're but, annoying you. Yes. In your, in, like the they're is like, can you stop it? I'm glad that they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> is that OK? <laughs> All right. Listen, well, let's just say I'm glad Reggie's not dead. Yeah, he I'm glad is you're alive. a brilliant I'm alive. human. Make sure to get his book on audio because he is a genius and you'd be so lucky to have him read you his book. I mean, Great honestly, Falls, Montana. It is out now. Am I, I right? I think that that is the way that I feel about you is that I'm glad you're alive. I'm glad you exist in the same time portal that I get to exist in. Oh my uh, God, we're so I, lucky. I say that all the time to, to my friends. I'm like, I'm glad we live in the same time period together. Yeah. It's like, it's a really sweet, thing to recognize it, because it's like you get this array of humanity and these are the people that you know and these yeah. are the people that you see and even your fans it's the same thing like they totally. live when you're the artist that is making the art you're making and yeah this is this is all the story that we're in we're all in this reality together and it's pretty fucking sick yeah it's a sick blip i'm glad to share it <laughs> with sick you. blips offshoot podcast coming live in april uh reggie before we say goodbye although that was a we should have just ended it there Fuck. Do you have anything you need to plug uh yeah i'm shooting my uh when does this come out may 6th tomorrow huh okay, okay one week from today <laughs> sounds like a great mini series limited <laughs> um no i'm doing a comedy special i'm shooting a comedy special on the platform known as veeps um which is started by the twins from good charlotte really yeah one of them um looks like me really well then both ben, of them benji do. i think benji madden okay they people say that he is my celebrity doppelganger. oh sick yeah, so there you go reggie a special from you that would be so amazing well i was trying to do a special for a long time i mean the last one was 2014 what and i think i was pitching a special with bad robot Sometimes JJ was on the line during the pitch and no one went for it. Wow. That's, that's incomprehensible. It was me. very crazy. I was like, wow. And, and, but it also taught me something, which is like, it doesn't matter how much hoo ha you've got for something when you're pitching stuff. Sometimes it's just, it just doesn't work. Like no, no one's, it's not in their mandate or it's like, they don't, they, it just doesn't matter who's See, a, could be Steven Spielberg. And then be like, no, I always think that I'm a little advanced and like, sometimes I feel like, Oh, I'm, I, my ideas are like too ahead of the time, but now that there's the pandemic, mm. I think maybe I'll be right on, right on, right on track. Yeah, you know, because two years went by. Oh, because we went backwards a bit. Yeah, so now. like oh, now my ideas are like, you know, they're not two years ahead of ahead of time anymore. Maybe they're, they're like in sync with the times a little bit. In sync like with that. a version of the times. Like I'm, I always want to be part of like the current sure. that's like going the other way. You want to be geist. Um, I want to be geist. geist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to be hard geist. The hard geist. <laughs> um, Reggie, people can come to your special. Yes, they can come. It's, a, it's at the Regent uh, Theater in Los Angeles. It tapes on 
March 3rd, the only rule is when you get a ticket, you'll get an email, but it uh, says that you have to dress as though it's 1998 or earlier. That cool. is so it's cool. A, I'm a, coming to this, by period, the way. It's a period comedy special. And um, yeah, and, the, and you can bring a camera, but it has to be 98 or earlier technology. And uh, your phones will be taken at the door. That's cool. <gasps> Ooh. Uh, ReggieWatts.com for more in, or something like uh, that? You know, socials Just at ReggieWatts. Reggie find Watts. me. Go to Veeps. Go yeah. to, you know, go to cool. the, the series known as Veeps. Um, or yeah, you'll find it. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Reggie, thank you for joining us. This was a pleasure. Man, what an absolute pleasure. This is great. Thanks, Reggie. Congrats, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace be with you. And unto you as well. Mm